Welcome, guys. Uh, today, joining us, we have Ch uh, Tremaine Ingram, uh, seventh round pick from the Los Angeles Rams. How you doing today? Good, man. How are you? I'm doing good. So, um, first and foremost, congratulations on being drafted. How does it feel to finally accomplish your goal? And did you have a lot of stress and anxiety between the time of the combine and the draft? Um, you know, first off, thank you. I appreciate it. a lot of hard work went into this. Uh, a lot of things people didn't see, a lot of grind, a lot of pain, a lot of, you know, sacrifices that went into it. But uh, it was worth it when getting my name called. And, yeah, it was a ton of anxiety, um, kind of from the combine, the senior role, all the way through to draft because of the COVID-19 crisis and not being able to have a traditional pre-draft experience. Mm -hmm. uh, so that did make it a little uncertain. I'm not sure where I stood and having to do a bunch of virtual meetings and just feel my way out. Uh, it was, it was off, but I'm, you know, happy about how the process turned out. Yeah. So um, how do you think you were able to combat that stress and anxiety leading up to the draft? Yeah. So as much as I could, I, I stayed focused on, um, you know, day by day things. I stayed focused on what I could control um, and doing that to the best of my ability every day. Um, finding ways to disconnect. You know, if you're always plugged in 24-7, you're, you're going to burn yourself out. So I found ways to disconnect. And I, and I found people that I really cared about um, that, you know, made it less stressful for me to just be myself and just relax and just be with them. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so uh, what, did you have a plan B? Uh, if you didn't get drafted or was football a top priority always? No. So, you know, as, as far as football was concerned, um, it was something I always did. It wasn't always a part of me. Um, whatever I was going to take up, you know, this professional endeavor, I was going to, one, help people, um, you know, provide opportunities, build, facilitate relationships, and uh, just be an ambassador for, uh, you know, the principles that I stood for. Um, whether that be in business, whether that be in broadcasting, whether that be in, you know, philanthropy or football, um, that's kind of my whole goal. And football just kind of provided me an opportunity to do these things and kind of, you know, stretch how I want to do things well, well into my future. That's, that's amazing. That's good. So, um, Tremaine, you've played in four national championship games and you've won two of them. What is the atmosphere and the energy like during those games? And also, what pressure do you and your team face when playing in these championship games for Clemson? I mean, it's one, it's exciting, right? I mean, just, yeah, just sitting in the hotel room, just, I remember when I, before I played at Clemson, I was like, man, like, those games must be intense. Like, they're very thick. Like, people are, like, really rooting for them all around the world. Like, that must be that must be crazy atmosphere. And then getting a play in it is kind of a surreal feeling because from outside in, it looks so crazy. But from inside out, you're just focused on getting your job done. But, mm -hmm. I mean, knowing that, you just have to understand that it comes with an immense pressure to, um, to perform because you're not only playing for you, you're playing for your teammates, your coaches, um, the college, the students there. Um, your family, the name on the back of the jersey, um, and everyone in between. Like, you've got a lot of people rooting on you to do your job. And uh, that can create some pressure. But that's when you lean upon your teammates to really uh, get through those tough times. Yeah, just big. it's bigger than just you. Mm hmm Yeah, that makes sense. So you grew up in Georgia, correct? I did. And so recently uh, the world was struck by the uh, – the murder of uh, Ahmed Ar Arbery. Did you are you familiar with that? Mm -hmm. um, while he was jogging, he was just jogging in the street and he was uh, murdered. So when you heard about the story, how did you? How did that affect you? And then what was your initial reaction? Um, to be honest, it's nothing new. I mean, this is the South. Things like that have happened for hundreds of years. I mean, we probably wouldn't even known about it if there wasn't a video. You know, um, it just brings you back to the the real tough reality that, you know, for people of color, 
um, you know, it's, it's, it's a dangerous world out there. Um, Would that be like, you know, real immediate imminent danger like he faced or really subversive, um, you know, trouble whether you're profiled or you don't get jobs or you don't get loans, things like that. It's a very dangerous world. And I was saddened by it, but I kind of made, made me think about all those other people that lost their lives as well, you know, and all the people that didn't get the video cameras on them and the Charleston shootings, things like that. Like, it's a real dangerous world, and that just adds more tension and more stress to, you know, everything you already go through. So I guess you kind of answered my follow-up, but um, you said there is, like, you have you experienced personal prejudice in the uh, being from the South? And did you did you know that type of stuff was possible in your state to happen? Um, yeah, I've had that prejudice on me before, um, kind of just going through. Um, being in Atlanta, it's a little different than being out in Georgia. Um, you start to see more of kind of prejudiced comments or people saying kind of hurtful things or, or you know, coming to you with these predetermined, you know, opinions of you before you even get there. Um, and that was all through that stuff. That was my time at Clemson and, you know, certain parts of Georgia. Um, and that happens, right? And uh, yeah, at first, when I was younger, I just used to get mad. Just call it hateful, you know, this, that, and the third. Well, some of it is, most of it isn't. Um, it really just comes from a place of ignorance that you got to help people understand because they don't know these things. They only know what they're being shown in the media, what they hear about, what they think. They're, they got to actually be taught these things. So, kind of growing up, learning how to interact with certain, you know, comments helped me really grow in my character. Yeah. So, Trey, man, how are you making sure you stay mentally healthy during this time? And what do you encourage kids to do around the world to stay mentally healthy during this time? I would have to say, for me, um, have something that you really, um, you really want. Find that, whatever it is, find that something that you really want, that you really love to do something you're passionate about that can keep your attention, you know, because it's right now a time where we have a, a, a pandemic, a crisis, um, but it really makes you focus on yourself more. Take some inner thoughts like, hey, this is something I'm passionate about. And for me, that's, you know, my service to people. Um, I love the game of football, so make sure I'll dial in my mat and the people around me. You know, I love the people around me. I love my relationships with my family, my friends. Coming to appreciate that more. Um, you know, kids got to find something you're passionate about, something you love to do. Once you find that, you know, time's going to fly by and you're going to be like, hey, you know, it's not an hour or two. It's just something I love I do, you know. Yeah, stay motivated, stay dedicated. Yeah, Absolutely. So going back to the draft real quick, um, when it was concluding, did you, did you, obviously you had some anxiety, but did, was your stress level uh, even higher than were you worried that you weren't going to get drafted? Yeah. Um, Cause at, at a certain point, it felt like all the work you had done to a certain point doesn't matter. Right. When you don't get drafted. Right. Um, obviously I knew I was going to be an NFL player, but I didn't, you know, I, I knew for a fact that I was good enough to be drafted. So, you know, it made me think like, hey, like all the work I've done, uh, you know, it doesn't amount to anything or it didn't matter. Like it was a waste of time, right? Um, so obviously that included my stress. And then you start wondering if I'm good enough to even play in the NFL. If you got guys that you knew you were better than that get drafted for it before you, then you're like, dang, am I really better than these guys? Am I really as good as I think? It just kind of plays with your psyche a lot. Um, but ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, we're all on God's timing. So I knew at the end of the day, I was going to be in the space I was going to supposed to be in. We often hear about, you know, celebrities coming to LA and often getting distracted by the bright lights and glamor of LA or living up to the LA lifestyle expectation. And that can often be a lot of stress. 
So what do you think you will do to make sure you don't get distracted and you keep football as your top priority? Um, I just go out there with a mission. Um, I've never really been one guy that's been taken for, you know, distractions or um, pretty girls, fast cars or parties and things like that. Like for me, like I'm not there on a mission. I have a job to do. And I put too much in it personally uh, for me to squander it with something as seamless as being distracted, right? Um, I just have to dedicate myself to my work each and every day. I have to, you know, reinvent my purpose every day to, to really dedicate myself to why I'm there and to really believe in my ability to do it because, you know, some people get distracted because they lose hope. And you can't really lose hope because uh, that's all you got at the end of the day. And uh, that's what I plan to do is just rededicate myself every day to my grind, my, my job, um, my purpose. That's awesome. So the coronavirus has obviously been affecting everybody from celebrities to healthcare workers to everyday people. Um, this is the first time probably in anybody's uh, lifetime that uh, everybody's been affected by the same thing. And so there's no amount of money that can necessarily prevent anybody from getting it or prevent somebody from losing a family member. So right. what, what extra steps are you taking um, to make sure both you and your family stay safe during this time? Just limiting it myself going outside. Um, if I do do anything, just limiting exposure to other people. Uh, social distancing is a real thing. Um, it really can help kill this virus as fast as possible. Like, you know, we look at Italy and we look at Spain and all those people. Um, you know, they had hardcore lockdowns, right? Like streets were empty, this, that, and the third. And that's why they were, you know, starting to have easing restrictions now. Um, for me, that's how we treat it, right? Um, they may be opening up Atlanta again. They may be opening up South Carolina again, LA soon. But for us, we just want to still be cautious because even though if I get it, it may not affect me as much. You still be putting someone else's life in danger. And that's even a hard pill to swallow, right? You don't want to be that guy that ends up getting someone else killed. Yeah. So um, during this time, depression is increasing, anxiety is increasing, stress is increasing all over the world in a drastic way. What are some things you do to keep yourself level-headed through difficult times and what have you done to keep your family members in a positive headspace well you find the bright side in everything i i honestly think humor is the the i think how you heal the soul honestly like you find the funny the funniness in every situation you find the humor in situations and um you never really take things super super seriously right for me, that that includes like, you know, yeah, we're in a pandemic. Yeah, we're locked down. Well, now you get to spend more time with your family, right? Like, it's, 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 it's fun and it's frustrating, but at the same time, it's like, hey, we're in this together. We might as well make the best out, the best out of the situation. Um, and that includes doing things you like, right? I like to jump on Call of Duty. I'm a war zone freak, right? Like, I get on there and I try to get two, three dubs a day. Like, I'm a basketball player at heart, so I can't, I can't leave on a miss. So, I got, I got to leave on a win. Or I like to read, um, different things like that. Um, before we get to the final question, I got a quick personal question for you. Um, how has what what have you guys as a team have been doing um, to? to keep connected and then uh, what's your, like your workout regimen, like what's, what's that been like for you? Um, yeah, so the training staff uh, at the Rams have been really good. Uh, they put together a nice training session, uh, training program um, through like the bridge app, um, game plan. They've sent us, you know, at home workouts, whether you have weights or whether you don't. Um, they, they send you equipment that you can use to stay in shape, different things like that help you, excuse me, just like stay ahead of the competition, right? Because usually you can use this kind of thing, this pandemic as an excuse to fall back, right? To, to get worse, to get weaker. But, you know, the real great ones find reasons why they get better, not why not, 
you know? So that's what uh, the Rams staff has been really good at doing. And now they've kept us in shape for a couple of weeks now. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, so I want to thank you again for joining us today. Um, I want to ask you if you could uh, give the U of DJ uh, community and then the Detroit community any uh, last words of encouragement before you go. Um, stay positive, stay together, and, uh, you know, believe that better days are coming. Well, I appreciate you, uh, Tremaine. I uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you have a long lasting career. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Thank you so appreciate much. Appreciate your time, guys. Enjoy talking with you. Yep, no problem. Likewise. Have a good one. You too.